Resting at the bottom of the Atlantic, she towers over the seabed. A skyscraper, a graveyard to 15,000 souls resting amongst her wreck. Sailing from Southampton on the 10th of April 1912, she set sail towards New York, picking up passengers from France and Ireland before entering the Atlantic waters. Her aim was to achieve the convented blue ribbon for the fastest Atlantic crossing. However, on the eve of April 14th, after ignoring many warnings, she crashed into the side of an iceberg, creating a deadly catastrophic event that could have been prevented. Eyewitnesses talk about a 30 foot gash on her starboard side. However, 73 years later, when she was accidentally found, no such evidence was found. Once known as the unsinkable ship, now resting unrecognisable to her proud designer, Mr Andrew Smith. So what really happened? Most people know the story. The Titanic hit an iceberg and it sank. Let me tell you what really happened on the eve of April 14th, 1912. The time was 11.40pm when Lookout spotted the iceberg. She was sailing too fast. Her captain and engineers tried everything they could, slamming the brakes on, putting her in reverse. But they were too late. Their final attempt was to veer sharp towards port, which made the starboard side slam into the floating ice. The Titanic was deemed unsinkable due to the amount of watertight compartments she had. 16, allowing her to stay afloat if four ever flooded. When the iceberg hit, it damaged the seal. The two plates separated below water level, allowing the sea to flood into the ship. Once the first five or six watertight compartments flooded, the weight of the water started to drag the bow down. This then created a shift in the Titanic's balance, making her lean to one side. Once the bow was submerged, it slowly dragged the rest of the ship with it. The first tension happened when the first funnel gave way and broke off the ship. More and more water was entering the ship. This caused its weight to multiply, dragging the bow further underwater. This was then followed by the stern lifting up out of the water and into the air. Once the stern was up, it created monstrous tension between itself and the bow, causing the ship to split in half, with over 100 passengers still on board. When the two halves split, the bow completely submerged, pointing down, dragged the stern into an almost upright position. At this point, they were only connected by the keel, before it snapped, allowing the bow to plummet at a headfirst angle before levelling out and hitting the seabed, breaking and collapsing with the force. With the stern still above, it quickly takes some water, submerging, disintegrating and imploding in a spiral on her way down to the seabed, before crashing down and each floor collapsing on top of each other. There was roughly 2,208 passengers on board, including crew, with only 750 surviving that fatal night. One of the most well-known survivors had a character based on her in James Cameron's Titanic. She was a first-class American passenger known as Margaret Brown, but everyone called her Molly. She boarded the Titanic in France due to her first grandchild being born. The Titanic was the fastest way to get to New York. After the collision with the iceberg, Molly helped other passengers off and into the lifeboats before being forced to go in one herself. When they eventually reached the land, after being rescued by the Carpathia, she and other survivors created the Titanic Survivors, in which she quickly became the cheerleader, raising up to $10,000 for the survivors. I hope you have enjoyed this Titanic podcast and have learnt new things. Thank you for listening.